What's going on, everyone? I'm just an average American here today to react and learn about how Norway's prisons are different than America's prisons. Now, prison in America, hmm. I think most Americans would agree that prison in the United States is not great. There's a lot of flaws with our prison system, although I won't pretend to know like I know everything about it. Uh, we tend to focus a lot on keeping people imprisoned there and not much in the way of rehabilitation in preparing prisoners for the outside world, trying to reform them, and ultimately release them back into the public if that is applicable, if that makes sense. Uh, if they've been reformed and learned something and can contribute to society, instead, America tends to focus on putting people in prison, sometimes for really dumb laws as well. Anyway, that's a whole other thing, but I, I'm very interested to see how Norway's prisons compare to American prison and uh, see if it's got some things that are better, things we can learn from. It just seems like something that we could do better, and I'm wondering how Norway does it. So, let's check it out. Staying in a maximum security prison is not a normal life, but that's also an ambition, to reduce the feeling of being in a prison as much as possible. See, that right there already is a different mindset than America, I think. America doesn't care if you feel like you're in prison. Your time in prison is not meant to be particularly comfortable or enjoyable, no matter what level of uh, severity you're there for, everyone is just treated poorly, I would say, you know, not horribly, like not crimes against humanity, but not with any kind of deep consideration. It's pretty bad, but, you know, whereas this already sounds like they're thinking about uh, what people's experience is in Norway's prison, which is Probably a good thing to be thinking about. In here, you have uh, my cell. So I have uh, DVD and uh, movies from there. Wow. The basic. Uh, I mean, in America, you can get certain things in your cell, certain perks, if you have good behavior, if you haven't done anything horrible. I think that has a lot to do with what, it, what your crime was, with how well you're treated in America. So Americans very much believe that Prisoners, people who have broken the law, don't really deserve to be treated particularly well. I think that's part of the American culture. question that we ask ourselves in Norway, what kind of neighbor do we really want? Uh, mm. Because they could move into my neighborhood and they could move into your neighborhood. So uh, I think this is an important question to ask ourselves. Really. So is he already talking about uh, the reform part of it? What the prisoners will be like when they get out one day and if they can be your neighbor and be someone that can have mutual respect with. That should have an influence on how we work inside prisons. Okay. The U.S. has the world's largest incarcerated population. Yeah, we have the most prisoners in the world. <laughs> with 655 out of every 100,000 people behind bars. Wow, I didn't even know that. That's a little less than one out of a hundred people? Wow! Wait, one out? Yeah. Like, 0.5 out of a hundred? 0.5 percent? Really? Wow. Okay. It's not good. America does put a lot of people in prison. That's a- we have very populated prisons. That's another thing. With, uh... Oh, that's just a whole other issue with, and the, the laws that we put people in prison for. Norway incarcerates just 60 out of 100,000 people. Not 600, but 60. One-tenth of America. Wow. It's not for, for the prison to judge or to punish. It's not for the prison to judge or punish. I mean, that sounds very kind, very empathetic. 
to your fellow man. It's just that in America, we don't think that we should put much effort into treating prisoners in a very um, thoughtful manner, I think. I think that's just how American prison systems are. I have to interact. I mean, we treat them, <laughs> I don't want to exaggerate, we treat them with a certain level of dignity and respect, but it's very much, uh, once you're in prison, you're gonna take care of yourself, basically. You're on your own. And be human. It's, I think it's as simple as that. Yeah, this, I mean, even the guards here seem extremely kind and empathetic towards the pr the attitude towards the prison is very kind and very humanitarian, which is wonderful. Uh, I don't think you'd see that much in American guards. Learning from Norway, the most innovative prison in the world. Innovative. Okay. In response to riots, high re recidivism rates? Recidivism? I don't even know that word. Recidivism? Google, please help me. Tendency to be convicted of criminal. Tendency of a, con a criminal to re-offend. Okay. High re-offend- High tendency to re-offend rates. And the murder of two correctional officers. Wow. In the 1980s and 90s. Okay. A response. Norway began to re-examine and restructure its approach to corrections. Okay. So some bad stuff happened. And Norway is looking at the data and the attitudes and saying, we got to re-examine this and adapt and evolve, which is a wonderful approach to have. The most important thing is how we treat people. This is the four key elements that I would like you to remember. The principle of normality, the focus that we have in Norway on humanity inside prisons, what we call wow. dynamic security, and the emphasis that we put on reintegration. In yes! The emphasis on reintegration, that is so important. America doesn't do that at all, from what I understand. Uh, oh my, already this sounds like such a wonderful place if you have to be in prison. It'd be good to be in Norway. But part of it is Americans really believe pri prison should not be an enjoyable experience. Uh, that's what Americans believe, because you're there because you committed a crime. So I still have that part of my bias uh, in all this. Into society. This group of activists, researchers, and corrections officials from America visited Norway. Oh, Americans visited Norway to learn about the Norwegian uh, system of prison. That's cool. We could learn from this. I would say the main goal of the trip is for inspiration to go bold back in the United States. Hmm. The group toured two Norwegian facilities. Huh, so American representatives came to Norway to, to learn about this and maybe Let's implement... Let's talk a little bit more about Holden then. How do we work and what are the unique, unique things about us? Holden Prison opened in 2010 and was designed specifically with the Norwegian philosophy of incarceration. Yeah, this wellness attitude, this rehabilitation attitude. It's often referred to as the world's most humane prison. So I don't know if all prisons in Norway are like this, or if this one is like a shining example of it. Uh, and it's kind of the most exaggerated version of a humane prison in the world, but it's interesting either way. I mean, this place looks nice. <laughs> and in here, you have uh, my cell. So I have uh, DVD and uh, movies from there. Yeah, the access to movies and um, pleasures that you would have at home is something that is not very common in America, although you do see it, for low offenders. Here we have a real toilet with a shower and everything. Mm. You know, you can see everybody have their key. Yeah, just the way they've painted this place and designed it is already much more comforting. It's very 
pleasing to even live here and look at. Uh, so they can open uh, or close to their doors whenever they want. Even though it's nice here, it's still not a summer camp. But I would like you to, you know, look be beyond the facilities. Uh -huh. It's not the most important thing. Normality. So this is the cell. Every cell is uh, similar. Mm. And uh, here we have the kitchen, where kitchen. I uh, used to prepare the food. You can see here is inside here. Is this like a public kitchen, or does it? Everyone does not get their own kitchen. Come on. That's a really important principle in Norway. Wow, look at this place. This is so nice. Way, which talks about that taking someone's liberty away and taking them away from their family, away from their community, that in of itself is the punishment. So life inside prisons should look as normal to life in the community as possible. And wow. Huh. So there's this philosophy here that the punishment is being taken away from your home, your family, from outside life. The punishment shouldn't be to live in this hellhole, this crappy, disgusting place. That's not the punishment. The punishment is you're taken away from your life and you should get to live somewhat normally in the prison. That's a very interesting idea. Very interesting. Uh, I would totally be in favor of this, especially for people who have committed kind of non-serious crimes. I'd absolutely be in favor of this. Um, and it is true that you should treat prisoners with humanity. Um, but on the other side, the American side of me does think that if you're a murderer or have committed a horrible crime, you shouldn't have a very pleasant experience in prison because you're there to be punished. So, yeah, I don't know. Both sides have merit. In here, you have this uh, washing room. You can uh, wash the clothes and oh. uh, dry it. Yeah, I mean, this place is great. I'd live here. <laughs> this is nice. Staying in a maximum security prison is not a normal life. And I noticed you're wearing just, you're just wearing normal clothes. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's... Um... Right, so this is a prisoner here, right here. I mean, he's walking around so normally and getting to dress normally and go to the kitchen and the washing machine. It's just like normal life for him. Yeah, it's pretty great. It's allowed. Um, you can wear whatever you want. Um, wow. That's also an ambition, to reduce the feeling of being in a prison as much as possible. That's you know, the normality principle. Who, who gets to go to this prison? Because being in this prison is quite a, it's a luxury. It's, a, it's a something that I wouldn't necessarily want for everyone, but I would want this prison for some. So I'm kind of split on this. How you can normalize the correctional setting for individuals to transition out, bigger challenge in our system, um, but definitely something to think about. The con He's right, he's right about that, is this system of prison is much better at helping prisoners acclimate to the outside world because Living in this prison in Norway is like, sort of like being in regular life uh, with a lot more restrictions, obviously, but it would do a much better job than American prisons in preparing you for life when you get out and being a member of society. So Commissary, that's good. The stores where an individual actually gets to go to a real store. Oh, they get to have like a store, like a simulated store. That's cool. And pick out commissary items. I think that's a, a good add, adds to the normalization. Yes, exactly. We think this is the most important part. Dynamic security sounds like a very fancy thing, huh. but it's really just having a normal interpersonal relations between the officers or all staff really and the inmates. See, here, I think in America, the relationship between the officers and the inmates is really strained. <laughs> it's, a, it's not a good relationship. People get in fights. People bribe the officers. The officers are basically free to do whatever they want, show favoritism. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's nothing like this. 
The role of the contact officer is one of the most important. Okay. Every inmate has a primary contact officer. And oh. every officer had to have two or three inmates that he is the, you know, the contact officer for. Wow. That was the ambition from guard to also be a social worker. Wow. A guard and a social worker. That's a perfect way to put it. Yeah. This is nothing like America. This seems very, very specialized. This, it, this must be uh, ex extra special in Norway. Every Nor prison in Norway cannot be like this, right? That would be incredible. That, they're like putting in so much effort in the rehabilitation, connecting with the inmates. That's uh, really amazing. Norway's contact officers participate in a two-year full-time college education. Right, okay. So the officers are educated in this. How to do this. Corrections officer training might last just weeks in some systems in the U.S. Yes! It is very easy to become a prison guard, prison officer in the U.S. And, uh, yeah, like this image here, this is what I think of. This is what I think of when I think of America, American prison, something like this. And the officers are not highly trained, certainly not there to be your friend, not there to listen to you and help you or rehabilitate you. Yeah, that's not how it is in America. The main subjects at the academy, ethics, psychology, communication mm. technique, criminology, law, human rights. Yeah. Of course, they do learn self-defense. They do learn extraction techniques. They do learn to work as a team. But that's not, you know, that's not the major components. Yeah. I, I mean, the U.S. has so many more prisoners in prisons than Norway. I think we have a lot harder time filling our prison guard uh, staff. So we have to accept people who don't need two years of training. We need them quicker than that, easier than that. I think that's one explanation, and another is we just don't prioritize rehabilitation and and having super well-educated guards that are going to be working one-on-one -on -one with prisoners. We just don't worry about that. It's about how do you treat people hmm. respectfully. <laughs> My family always think that I just play games because that's why I like very much to play games. Hmm. So uh, I often play... Um, uh, play cards and stuff with, uh, with inmates. Oh. I know in some states. Wow, their relationship with the inmates is very close. Wow. It's, it's you know, forbidden and will have consequences for you if you interact with inmates as a staff member. Quite the opposite here. We expect uh, and demand. Yeah. <laughs> There's no interaction like this that I'm used to with American prison. It's totally the opposite. An interaction between staff and inmates. It's kind of friendship with someone. Um, and wow. to see the progress and see the changes, that's the best way to drop. Wow. Wow. Uh, the contact officer is... Reintegration. Probably the number one thing Americans wish they saw more in American prisons. Uh, that we could learn from Norway. For example, sitting down with you and making you a future plan. Huh? So what for um, steps by steps to be, become a free man? From, from day one? Yeah, yeah. 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 So the officers need to know everything about the system and give advice to the, uh, to the inmates about, you know, the future, what steps should they take. Huh. They even give guidance and advice to the inmates and about their future. That's a whole other mindset. Talking about their future when you when they're at, when you get out of here, what are you gonna do? That's such a smart thing to be thinking about. Norway has one of the lowest uh, recidivism rates in the world. Recidivism, uh, re that's the rate of reoffending. Yeah, so their system is working. The inmates who get out of prison don't commit crime again on average. Uh, where I think the U.S. has a really high rate of re-offenders. Hmm. Humanity. Photos of my daughter, oh. the love of my life. I've been here for one and a half year. 
but I was transferred from a prison in Brazil. You can compare that to come from hell to heaven. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I'm thinking pr any prison anywhere compared to this is going to be hell. It's going to be so much worse. This is amazing. And I think the prisoners should be very grateful and take advantage of this opportunity. It's great. <laughs> it's, it's a big difference. The guards, first of all, uh... In Brazil, the guards are uh, more you feel bad and weakness, the more they feel good here. Wow. Yeah, that says it all. The guards in other countries, they are not your friend. They're not there to be your friend. You have the guards, you know, they, they was very kind to me when I came. They are still very kind. Mm. Um, we can speak, you know, they treat me as... And a, a human being um, in, in Brazil you get treated like an animal and you can tell it has an effect on people like him being treated like a human that is definitely something that more prisons should do the level of treatment is probably so bad on average that that's a major thing that should change it's just yeah you're living in this bad place it's not comfortable but Everyone should be treated as a human being. I've been working here since uh, the opening in uh, 2010. And I've been working other prisons before that also. It's not mm. for, for the prison to, to judge or to punish. Because the police catch the guy, goes to the court and, uh, and it gets a sentence perhaps. Yes, they got their sentence. Once they come to prison, it's not for the prison guards to punish them more, but in America, it's almost a part of the culture. It's almost a part of it where you're like, oh, you know the prison is gonna enact its own form of punishment onto the prisoners as well that are off the books, that no one ever hears about, the really bad stuff. And then it comes to prison with that. We have to interact and be human. Yeah, it's. I think it's as simple as that. It really is because we can uh, we can uh, create uh, walls between us. I'm sure in America we might be able to find qualified individuals to fill this kind of role, but it would just be so hard to staff enough of them in all the prisons in America to create m environments like this. But that doesn't help anything. We have to communicate, we have to interact. Without yeah. approaching people with respect and dignity, it's impossible to sit down the next day and talk about his future, because yeah. he will not have any trust in you. So uh, in order to you know, work well with reintegration and future planning, etc., there has to be you know, a foundation there of trust between the staff and the inmates. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. What they're saying makes a lot of sense. I've visited a lot of prisons in the United States as well, and somehow I don't have the same kind of feeling of, you know, relief of getting out of an impressive environment that, I, that I've experienced coming out of those prisons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think on average. <laughs> I mean, America is not the worst place in the world to go to prison, I think. I've never been to prison, <laughs> thankfully. But uh, I think America is like kind of in the middle. And then you have really bad places. And then you have Norway up here just being like the shining star of that's where you'd want to go to get help, too. I think that says something about how different the environment is here. I think mm -hmm. uh, I have big opportunities uh, here to, to prepare myself for, for the life uh, after uh, prison. I thought there, there is still hope. There is still opportunities, you know, to, to get, a, get a good life. Yeah, you can see how it also affects their the prisoner's mindset, where they're like, I have hope now. I have hope for the future, my future, and there are people here to help me. Such a different mindset than other prisons. In America, for instance, where it's meant to be a horrible experience, the end is never in sight. It's just, it's crazy. After uh, getting out. 
So, yeah. Wow. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Now this news. Very nice. I like that a lot. That was fascinating. Moving. Beautiful, even. Um, the prison here that I saw in Norway seems like it couldn't be more different than America. This is, if I commit a crime, <laughs> I want to go to this prison. This is like, they treat you like a person. They, tr they talk to you. They rehabilitate you. They let you shop for groceries and do your laundry. Act, things you do as a person living. So you're ready when you get out to live and do something. And uh, because of that, there's not high rates of committing crime again in Norway. In America, it's all upside down. It's all the opposite. And uh, the results speak for themselves, don't they? I think just the problem would be implementing this on a nationwide scale in America would be difficult and slow. And the American people, this is just not a priority to the American people compared to other things, as sad as that is, as heartless as that seems. Americans really don't talk about or care about how prisoners are treated. Some care, most don't talk about it, and that's just the truth. So, this is, this was really a moving video, very enlightening, and I'd love to see at least some of this stuff implemented in America. There were people there who had traveled from America to learn, and that's a great first step, but I certainly haven't heard anything recently in America about implementing these things, so I think it'll be a slow process, but hopefully it happens, you know? Uh, but at any rate, this was a great, a great video to watch and learn about. Uh, very, very cool. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, uh, feel free to give it a like or a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Norway, Norwegian culture, things I have never seen, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thank you for watching and see you next time.